Hi, my name is Pumika and in this lesson we are going to study about the digestive system. So this lesson uh, it's going to be a background lesson for the actual physiology of digestion which I will be including in the next chapter so you may check that out to understand the the basic process. In this we are going to actually study about the structure of the digestive system and the various organs and the accessory glands that are involved in it. So let's jump right in. Okay, so here we've got the digestive uh, tract or the elementary tract. Let's start off with the mouth here. We've got the soft palate right on top. We've got the high hard palate underneath it. And then we've got the oral cavity, of course, from where you ingest your food. We've got a bo um, very muscular organ right here, the tongue, which helps to mix in all the food in inside the mouth. And then we got some salivary glands which secrete saliva. The sublingual gland can be observed right here. And then we've got the submandibular gland right under the mandibles. And then one in the back, which is the parotid gland. So uh, these, they kind of unite and terminate into a long food pipe, which is known as the esophagus. This esophagus terminates into the stomach. You do not need to mark the laryngopharynx and the larynx and the trachea into this because this is a part of the respiratory system and uh, you, you certainly don't need to mark this in the digestive tract. Okay, so uh, right here we've got the stomach. And beside the stomach, there's, there's a gland which is known as the liver. And uh, the liver also has this green colored thing right adjacent to it, which is the gallbladder. Then we've got the duodenum, which is a D-shaped structure and it is the topmost part of the small intestines. Then finally, it terminates into jejunum, which is a J-shaped structure and the rest of the small intestines, which are the ileum. All right, so this was about the small intestines. Then we have a common bile duct that comes from the gallbladder and from the liver. And if you can observe, there's a yellow colored leaf-like structure right in the back of the stomach. This is termed as the pancreas, another very important uh, gland in the whole digestive system. Then let's come on to the large intestines right here. So these square-like structure is constituted by the large intestines. It starts out with a vermiform appendix, a very, very, very famous um, vestigial organ. Then we've got a swollen structure right in the beginning of it. It's the cecum. And because this whole, the whole thing it is going up, that is why we call it ascending and the organ is known as the colon. The transverse colon and descending because it's coming out. This is the descending colon. So uh, here we've got a sigmoid structure which is known as the sigmoid colon. And it finally terminates into the rectum where all the waste products are stored. And the anus to which the waste products they are given out of the body. Let's look at each of uh, the parts into deeper detail. We've got the tongue here and then we have the jaws. There is the soft palate which is right on top and then the hard palate. Uh, above it we've got the lips here and here we've got the oral cavity okay so this is the esophagus right as you can see and then we've got the epiglottis as well epiglottis is a you know it's a cartilaginous structure which kind of covers your lungs while you're eating so that is the reason why when you're eating the food is not supposed to go inside your trachea and uh, the epiglottis it you know kind of partially opens when you're sleeping and that is why you're not advised to eat while sleeping okay moving on we've got the esophagus here and then we have a have a cardiac sphincter the sphincters they control the entry and exit of certain uh, particles in this case we have the bolus so as the food bolus starts moving it moves into the fundus region right on top the topmost part of the stomach is known as the fundus and the middle region is also known as the cardiac region and then the lowermost is known as the pylorus the pylorus terminates into the duodenum uh, passing through the pyloric sphincter right here okay let's uh, take a closer look at the liver and the pancreas and the bile duct we have the liver the biggest gland inside the human body then we have the uh, leaf shaped pancreas and then a small part of the stomach is also seen we also have the gallbladder and a duct which arises from the pancreas and the liver and the gallbladder is termed as the common bile duct 
and you can observe it well right here then uh, we also have the pancreatic duct which goes right through the center okay so now let's come on to the small intestines small intestines are very important because major absorption it takes place in the small intestines that is why we need to know all the internal structures as well so here are the small intestines as you can see the lumen it contains very minute finger like uh, projections which are called as villi so here we have the villi and then we also we also can see the inside parts and inside layers of the lumen of the alimentary canal and the outermost is the mucosa because it's a, it it secretes mucus and then we had the sub mucosa and the innermost is the muscularis which is again a fibrous muscular layer okay uh, moving on let's take a deeper look at a villi inside the villi you can see the epithelial cells which line the outermost region and then we have the capillary and then we also have the lacteals so uh, this this was inside the villi then deeper on they kind of you know simplify themselves and you can finally see the veins and the arteries and the lymphatic duct right here so moving into an epithelial cell you can observe that there is one nucleus and then there is a sub mem cell membrane as well and then there are microvilli present all on top of it so these are kind of the structure you should know about the structure because these are involved in absorption process and it kind of makes it easier to understand how absorption really takes place if you know the internal structure of this okay so uh, starting out with the salivary glands the main salivary glands are found in the cheeks under the tongue and around the jaw and they secrete about one quarter of saliva every day a myelase also called tylen is an enzyme which is uh, in the saliva and that breaks down starches or complex carbohydrates such as bread rice and potatoes lysozyme is another salivary enzyme which helps to keep the mouth free from germs Saliva also contains mucus which coats the food and it enables each bite to travel smoothly through the digestive tract. So that was about saliva. Uh, moving on we've got the stomach. The stomach is an important organ for digestion production of gastric juice which is comprised of HCl, the hydrochloric acid and water and of course some enzymes the hydrochloric acid it works with the main gastric enzyme called pepsin to aid the digestion of protein rich foods like eggs meats and tofu the production of acid is increased by a hormone which is known as gastrin and it's made by specific cells aligning of the stomach we're going to study about hormones like gastrin and all such sorts in introductory endocrinology so uh, no need to pay attention to it right now the stomach also produces gastric lipase which assists in digesting the fats an intrinsic factor or an enzyme like compound which helps the small intestines absorb vitamin b12 also known as cyanocobalamin is also produced in the stomach so that was about uh, the stomach as an organ moving on we have the leafy shaped pancreas the pancreas are a sh leaf shaped organ that lies below the stomach it secretes juices rich in enzymes capable of digesting the three main energy nutrients carbohydrates fats and proteins so this is the first organ in a uh, sequential distribution of the alimentary tract which digests all these three because um, in the mouth the saliva is not able to digest any other thing except for the carbohydrates and in the stomach the salivary enzymes they get inactivated due to very low ph and uh, that is the reason why the pancreas is the first organ in, in sequence to be secreting enzy enzymes for the digestion of all three so pancreatic enzymes do most of the fat digestion secreting pancreatic lipase esterase phospholipase which break down chemically complex fats into simple easy to absorb fats similarly trypsin and carboxypeptidase also breaks down proteins and pancreatic amylase breaks down carbohydrates moving on we have the liver which produces a greenish juice termed as the bile very important and it is stored and concentrated by the gall bladder after a high fat meal such as the one containing cheese cream or bacon the fats from the food they tend to stick to each other to form large spheres these spheres are supposed to be broken down and because these are too big for the enzymes to work on the fats can be absorbed by the body so bile it acts as a soap breaking the bonds between these uh, spheres and it turns into tiny globules that are easily taken up by the body and bile is not an enzyme but it is essential for the fat digesting enzymes to work so you got to remember that bile is not an enzyme we have the final final um 
organs in the digestive tract these are the intestines while the digestive process begins in the mouth and the stomach digestion gains momentum when food enters the small intestines this is where secretions from the pancreas liver and small intestines do most of the digestive work the lining of the small intestines is covered with tiny finger like extensions called the villi we have done this diagrammatically in detail where uh, which is where the nutrients they get absorbed into the blood the tips of villi they have many enzymes that digest proteins carbohydrates and fats such as peptidases disaccharidases and intestinal lipases enzymes that digest simple sugars are also secreted here such as lactase and sucrase the deep spaces between the villi are called crypts which secrete mucus bicarbonates and water in addition to these secretions the cells of the small intestines also produce hormones like secretin cholecystokinin which stimulates other organs to release the digestive juices so that was about the structures present in the digestive system we did about the diagram we did about um the the basic organs and the accessory glands which are responsible for digestion in the next lesson you you will be studying about the actual physiology of digestion how everything happens so i would kind of recommend you all to practice diagrams as much as you can because if you draw the diagram and then start writing about it it becomes ultra easy so if you like this lesson you may follow me rate me review me and recommend this lesson wherever relevant uh thank you so much for watching